When a problem comes along, you must whip it. Or stab it in the face with a scimitar. Or just push it into a trap that'll impale, burn, or otherwise butcher said problem like a hog. That's the MO of City of Brass, a first person stabber that's a curious mix of the visual aesthetic of Prince of Persia, the whip sub weapon from Bulletstorm, and the crushing difficulty of a roguelike. To many casual folks, this is a subgenre that was spawned from Satan's own buttocks. But to others, including myself, there's a challenge in it that's worth relishing. Either way, you'd best make peace with the fact that in City of Brass, you're about to die many, many times before you're going to catch a whiff of some end credits. Despite the impressive swashbuckling skills of our mysterious protagonist, the titular city you've unearthed has immense treasure inside that's heavily outweighed by its dangers. A variety of fez-wearing skeletons stand between you and the exit to the next procedurally generated suburb. If these local brass holes don't shank, fireball, or stick you full of arrows first, the aforementioned pitfalls will. Your piddly little health pool allows you to sustain maybe four hits. City of Brass is going to chafe you in the beginning, but it's also going to become incredibly addictive in a very short amount of time. Killing efficiently is paramount to your success, as is sniffing out secret treasure troves and the loot that's hiding in many of the destructible items in the world. Why all the kleptomania? It'll give you more choices when you stumble across a randomly positioned merchant genie who will be peddling the weapons or perk giving trinkets you'll need to survive. The more offensive among you might lean towards a paddle bat that smacks enemies backwards or a longer whip that separates the men from the boys and can slow down or set your foes on fire. Kmart shoppers could also take advantage of the ability to disarm traps in the area, plus there's a range of friendly AI bodyguards, fancy pants armor fashion wear, precious heart containers, or superhuman enhancements to your running and jumping skills. Sadly, and this is classic roguelike behavior, you're going to lose everything when you die, along with your gold. Basically, it's get good or go home, wannabe Aladdin. <laughs> Fortunately, even with all these perks and abilities stripped away from your character, City of Brass is an absolute joy to play. Zipping about, pilfering what you need in levels that are constantly reconfiguring is a blast, and there are also some cool combat strategies to employ, thanks to the whip. For example, L1 will yank enemies in a few steps towards you, hopefully into a bottomless chasm, L2 can sling one-use bombs and exploding lanterns right into your hands, and Uppercut Games has perfected a subtle layer of auto-aiming here. It effectively lets you swiftly target body parts to either blind, trip, or disarm your foes. If that isn't awesome enough, you can clear a room with a quick snap at an exploding brazier, or whisk yourself Indiana Jones style out of harm's way by cracking onto an overhead grapple point. Last but not least, fairly simple sword swipes on R2 can be complemented with an R1 push, resulting in a shunt that will hopefully turn your enemy into a shish kebab on some spikes. I'm telling you now, it's satisfaction plus. The only thing that's more entertaining than that is whip catching a ghost chicken, throwing it next to a red barrel object, and watching its squawky little jive lure in half a dozen enemies who will have a flash mob dance party right before you kill everyone. City of Brass is incredibly high stakes, but it also has a quirky, tongue-in-cheek sense of humor that I dig. And why wouldn't it? It's the brainchild of six Aussies at Uppercut Games, a dev studio that's punching well above its weight here in terms of presentation. The Arabian Nights and Arabian Days here in this Unreal Engine 4 title are saturated with vivid colouring and attention to detail. There's also a robust templating system going on behind the scenes too. You'll repeatedly replay the very first suburb in this magical shifting sands of a city, but every iteration will feel fresh and mysterious. Yeah! The only downside I can level at this production, a parody hasn't been maintained across all the platforms. Sorry PS4 owners, but while the Xbox and PC versions come in glorious 4K, 1080p is the best you're going to get. Beyond that disappointment, City of Brass is every bit a sleeper hit. It looks great, the gameplay loop is damn solid, and getting handed your own ass will always come with the muttered phrase, crap, ah, just one more go. And why not? Every new go will inch your level up and improve your base abilities too. Bottom line, you should not underestimate the addictive properties of City of Brass. This, my friend, is whip crack. <laughs>